I'm going to keep this very short. First, uh, I want to thank um, Jack and Doris Shadbolt and Ellen and Warren Tallman. Uh, both of those families set up endowments at Simon Fraser University, and it's largely through their generosity that we're able to keep the Redner Residence Program going. And tonight is actually officially the Jack and Doris Shadbolt Lecture. In the fall, when we bring in our new writer and residents, we will have the Ellen and Warren Tallman Lecture. Now, if there's anyone here who would like to achieve a comparable form of immortality <laughs> by donating to the university, I'd be very happy to talk to you uh, after the presentation. The main person I have to thank, of course, is, is Jordan. Uh, we've had a lot of writers in residence over the years at SFU. We've had poets, we've had prose writers, we've had established artists, we've had up-and-coming talents. But I honestly can't think of a writer in residence who has gone out of his way more than Jordan to engage with the SFU community. Jordan has gone beyond the pale to reach out to students, to help them with their writing, to promote events like this and others, to visit classrooms, to make himself available. He set a new standard for what a writer in residence can do in our scholarly and creative community. So, Thank you, Jordan, not just for your talent, but for the generosity you've brought to SFU this past year. So thanks to Jordan, and thanks to my old teaching assistant, Jason Starnes, who will be accompanying him, uh, and what I'm sure is gonna be a thrilling and fascinating evening. So Jordan, first Steve, and then Jordan. Thanks, Paul. So it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Jordan Scott, something I feel like I've done many times in my life already, <laughs> but uh, something which I never tire of actually doing. Um, in April 2015, Jordan Scott spent five days touring the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center, where he was allowed to take photographs and notes, as well as capture field recordings. His talk tonight explores the connections between redaction and ambient sounds, examining how one can listen to redaction, and so this is a quote from Jordan about, about his um, experience and project he's working on. Quote, the activity of recording is not a neutral act. A body is present. These recordings are often interrupted by my breathing, a crush of fabric, or my footsteps. These mediating traces form a sonic register of the troubling ethics of my presence at Gitmo. My privileged form allowed access to peruse the camp and perform my own egress. And I think, too, of what I was actually listening for, as opposed to listening to, when I was allowed to walk alone through the open-air prison, Camp X-Ray, in the middle of the night, sound was absence, beguiling, out of sight, out of reach. That's a quotation within the quotation. The crickets hiding their forms, the wind in unlocatable grasses, my guilt trans uh, transgressions to imagine the prison at full audio, full pitch, and how these uncontrollable sounds must have bled through the chain link and barbed wire and out into the night. How easily I walked in and out of the open air cells. How I planted myself in the interrogation booths behind the, ma the main prison compound and farther up the valley, attuned to distant signals, eavesdropping on ghosts and their chatter." End quote. Um, Jordan began working on this project um, from a previous project on uh, stuttering, the stutter, his, his own stutter, but the stutter as kind of a, of a metaphor or uh, uh, something you could find in the world around him. And that led him into thinking about disfluency in a, in a wider sense. Thinking about disfluency led him to uh, interrogation manuals, uh, American military interrogation manuals, where disfluence, disfluent speech was uh, highlighted as a sign of guilt, secrecy, all sorts of things. Um, so obviously, the, it's, it's disfluency and, and following its pathway through the world that led Jordan to Guantanamo Bay um, through those interrogation manuals. A lot of them are, of course, uh, were used in Guantanamo Bay. Uh, what, what's really then chilling, I think, and striking about the project is that really what's being identified is kind of an ambient disfluency in the culture writ large. That is that there are wide swaths of information that have been redacted, erased, and sequestered. 
uh, and that, and, and this, and again, I'm talking about a very large scale, so that in some ways the entire world uh, is becoming a state of exception in which these highly secret practices uh, of withholding and erasing and, and, and disappearing um, uh, we meet in very many different ways in our culture, uh, unfortunately. So it's this, this troubling picture, I think, that Jordan's starting to um, uh, pick up kind of the, 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 uh, the, the, the feedback of in, in these kind of sound recordings. Jordan Scott is the 2015 and 16 SFU writer in residence. His books include Silt, Blurt, Decomp, and Clearance Process, uh, which was published very recently uh, by Small Caps with, with, with the Capilano Review. Um, it's online, uh, it includes photographs, text, and some of these ambient sound recordings you'll also be hearing some of tonight. This project um, it was uh, done collaboratively with Jason Starnes, so I'm going to introduce Jason as well. Jason Starnes is a critic and composer. His composition of, uh, of Scott's field recordings will be presented tonight and also appears in that clearance uh, process um, thing online, which I really highly recommend you go online and, and, and find that and listen to that and look at those images. It's, it's eerie. That's what I have to say, I think. Anyhow, uh, without further ado, please welcome Jordan Scott. Thanks so much for uh, coming this evening. Um, I, I'd just like to begin by thanking um, SFU uh, and the SFU uh, Department of English. Um, and the writer and uh, residents of the committee. Uh, it's been, uh, it's a, it was a real honor for me and uh, very um, humbling to be um, a part of the de uh, department as well as a part of um, the, uh, the uh, lineage of the other uh, the writers who have uh, been uh, the writers and the residents. Um, uh, uh, what I'm uh, presenting this evening is as, as I think most of my the work in the last maybe 10 years or so is the collaborative and um, could not have been done without um, all sorts of people who are much more much smarter and more talented than I am um, helping me uh, work through uh, ideas um, and um, so uh, with that in mind, I'd like to thank uh, the editors of the Capilano Review, um, uh, Dylan and Andrea, for uh, the working on the small caps uh, chap of the book with me, uh, as well as um, Alison uh, Dean, who uh, wrote um, in a companion essay uh, to that uh, chap book. Um, and of course, I'd like to thank uh, Jason, who's been uh, working with me um, on this for uh, a really a long time now. Um, and again, I couldn't do uh, any of it uh, without him. Um, and I also would like uh, to thank my wife, uh, Summer, who is here this evening. Um, we have two uh, small uh, the children at home who are very bad. And uh, <laughs> they require a lot of um, effort uh, and um, uh, during the residency, uh, uh, Summer has been doing a lot of un, un you know, uh, um, un unacknowledged uh, labor, um, and so I'd like to acknowledge that this evening. Um, of this, uh, of this uh, painting, uh, Picasso said the, the quote, the black sky isn't a sky, it's blackness. As uh, for the uh, lighting, there are two types. Um, uh, the one we don't understand. It um, illuminates everything, everything like moonlight. The uh, Sierra, the uh, Belfry, and the men shooting, who should not be uh, lighted uh, from behind. Um, but it sheds far more light than uh, the moon. It hasn't the same um, uh, the, uh, color. Then there's a huge lantern on the, on the ground right in the middle. And what does it um, illuminate? The guy raising his arms, the martyr, if you should uh, look at it carefully, you'll see that it sheds um, a, um, a light 
only on him. The, uh, the, uh, the lantern is, is, is death. Uh, why? Mm, uh, no one knows. Mm, end quote. Uh, the CIA views of poetry as a, a threat to uh, national security because of the potential uh, codes or uh, uh, messages being smuggled out and or sh shared between detainees. In Guantanamo Diary by Muhammad al uh, Muhammad uh, Salahi, a current detainee at Guantanamo, and I should say that uh, this is a, uh, the memoir uh, that he uh, wrote, um, and it, it, it's in part uh, a collaboration with the, with, uh, the CIA, essentially. So uh, in order for him to publish this, uh, the, um, uh, the memoir, uh, they had to read it, and thus the memoir has, um, has quite a lot of uh, redactions within it. In this, in this book, he recounts a particular interrogation session uh, where um, he shared a, a, a the poem with one of his interrogators. Salahi says, quote, one of my poems went, end quote, followed by 52 redacted lines. Um, I want to use these two images for my talk today to um, uh, navigate the interplay between uh, light and dark, between redaction and uh, uh, revelation, and to discuss witnessing in spaces where everything is concealed from un um, unauthorized uh, view, a censoring that is not pure destruction, the sanitized witness in, in the state of controlled light. After a, a, a year-long uh, clearance uh, process with the American uh, mili um, uh, military, specifically the United States Southern uh, the Command, I was uh, granted access to visit the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center in April 2015. The process was extremely uh, thorough. I would provided documents and uh, references and he agreed to several background checks. I would applied as a poet and provided the required, quote, a brief out, out, um, outline on the scope of what your story will be, end quote. In this document, I outlined my research into the stutter, uh, disfluency, and interrogation, and provided the required samples of, of, of my work. My final approval came as a signed country clearance form and I booked a, a round trip ticket from uh, the Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the only airport with service to Guantanamo Bay, on, a, a, on the flight operated by IBC Air, it, quote, your, your uh, gateway to the uh, Caribbean, end quote. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why I was uh, permitted access to, uh, to uh, Guantanamo, from conversations with the members of the, mili um, of the military uh, stationed uh, there. Access is given on a case-to-case -case basis, and criteria for acceptance changes with every command rotation. As far as I know, I was, I was the first uh, poet to be uh, the granted uh, the clearance. Uh, from these soldiers, I got the sense that some of the units are simply more open than others, to, to both non-journalists and those applications that propose the political and or the critical uh, stories. I spent f f f f five days touring the, the, the uh, facilities. I was taken through almost every aspect of the, uh, the premises. Uh, the medical center where a force of the feeding was explained and uh, demonstrated the detainee library, where I was allowed to browse the many of the approximately 10,000 of the volumes of uh, books and uh, magazines. Camp 6, 
where I was allowed to, to, uh, to either view detainees, quote, uh, going about their uh, day, end quote, camp, camp justice, where the trials are held, camp um, x-ray, uh, the, uh, the first detention uh, facility uh, built um, at Gitmo, now completely taken over by the natural environment, and uh, uh, where I was allowed to walk uh, through the cells, the staging areas, and the interrogation booths in the afternoon and at night. And Camp um, Iguana, the, uh, the juvenile detention facility where, um, where um, Omar Cotter was held. The, uh, the frontispiece of my press uh, kit uh, read, quote, Joint Task Force Guantanamo, uh, safe, uh, humane, um, uh, legal, uh, uh, transparent. End quote. I was never uh, left um, alone um, at Gitmo, though I was uh, permitted, barely as it turned out, to collect a, a variety of ambient sound recordings and to write uh, poems and, um, um, and uh, notes on my iPhone. For security uh, the readings, I, um, for, for security um, uh, reasons, I was not permitted to record what one public um, um, affairs representative referred to as, quote, a non-permissible um, human voice, end quote. I attempted to record everything else and transcribed all the overheard small talk um, that I could. Uh, when it came to uh, the photographs and the uh, video, uh, the, uh, the members of the media tour were prohibited from, catcher, from uh, the, uh, the capturing, uh, quote, uh, 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 the frontal uh, facial the views, uh, pro, profiles, uh, three-quarter uh, views, or any view uh, revealing a detainee's identity, end quote. In other words, as one public affairs officer put it, quote, if, they're, uh, if, they're, if they're, uh, the mother can't identify the detainee in the photo, th then it's a good photo, end quote. Every day of the tour ended in the same uh, uh, way, uh, with an operational security or OPSEC uh, uh, meeting. At these meetings, we were made to show the PA, the representatives, public the fair representatives, are the photos, audio recordings, the videos, or quote, other artistic renderings, end quote. In, in the case, any of it constituted operational protected information. These uh, meetings were held uh, right beside uh, Camp of the Justice, where the, uh, the trials are currently being held. Uh, um, and the room that we were to go in, it was in this enormous uh, D of the commissioned um, air hangar. Um, so at these meetings on the first night, um, they kind of stopped after this. But on the first night, they would go through my, uh, the poetry and uh, re, uh, ambient sound re recordings uh, with, with uh, disinterest, I would say. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I think once they uh, realized my, uh, the, uh, the commitment to, uh, to ambient sound and uh, the once they, uh, they, uh, they understood that um, I was just going to be uh, writing uh, poems, um, they, uh, they sort of stopped uh, checking my work. Um, <laughs> but really what they were looking for are, were descriptions of, of the locks or um, horizon uh, lines or um, uh, detailed descriptions of uh, secure uh, facilities. So in this, in this sense, uh, the um, ambient sound and the poetry that I wrote went unnoticed un, 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 un and undetected um, in that I was um, allowed uh, to leave with them. Um, I happened to uh, the visit, uh, um, I happened to visit uh, the, uh, the Gitmo 
uh, the, during the uh, Baltimore, uh, the riots, which were uh, constantly uh, played on all the screens and the radio stations at the facility. Uh, the, much of the the talk under um, um, much of the talk um, uttered by the uh, the members of the military addressed the potential imminent uh, of the closure of the of the uh, the prison, the allegations of torture and enhanced interrogations, and the issue of le legality uh, with regard to detaining the uh, 111 uh, men that that uh, remained uh, uh, when I was there. I think I went to uh, I think I went to get uh, Mo because I felt an obligation to consider uh, redacted, declassified uh, um, uh, documents, not as some kind of intellectual um, exercise, but as a witnessing of all that surrounds there, uh, the, uh, the creation, the uh, landscape, sea, temperature, the soundscape of get of 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 uh, Guantanamo. I wanted to know uh, whether it was possible to listen in spaces of, of trauma. I, I wanted to uh, look f for and uh, listen to possible instances of insurgency and c contestation, to uh, the critical acts of resistance, incendiary acts that somehow would, uh, m would, would uh, mark a, the breaking out and breaking the from the frame of my embeddedness. I wanted to get as close as I could to the indefinitely uh, detained. Those bodies only uh, gleaned through blacked out interrogation and autopsy reports. One of the centering and the questions I have about my time at, at the prison is to ask, is it possible to document absence? I also wanted to question the ethics of my desire, and this is important. Why did I want to see these men? Um, um, and, and using uh, Sadida Hartman as a, a guide, I also wanted to ask, quote, um, uh, what does exposure to the uh, uh, violated body uh, mean? Does the pain of another merely provide us with the opportunity for self-reflection? Um, the issue here is the precariousness of m m m m m m empathy and the uncertain line between witness and spectator, end quote. And when I uh, watch those men pray and eat but, uh, behind two thick uh, um, of panes of, refl of re uh, reflective uh, glass in a place called Camp Six, it is, is it even possible in that moment to consider my position um, ethical? Um, what is an ethical response or reaction to that experience? Can poems possibly come of this encounter? And critically, um, should they? I'm tasked today to speak to you about uh, witnessing. And yet when I uh, see this um, image, I see only my, com I see only that my complicity and unethical um, uh, witnessing a desire selfie, marking place. I was here, um, um, uh, pissing on a territory as if to imagine myself as, uh, as, as uh, the one, the no one, to a quote Salon, who bears witness for the witness. When I was at the medical of the clinic, uh, the uh, the doctor explained uh, the procedure of 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 a uh, force feeding. And then we have an actual soft enteral feeding tube. This is designed for delivering enteral nutrition. This is the same type of tube that I might use in the hospitals that I serve patients in back home. Um, the detainees offered the choice of which um, no nostril that they'd like the tube placed in, and we also have um, a lubricant that we use to make the procedure soft, the tube a little softer and more flexible. 
And finally, the detainee can choose to have some lidocaine, which is a little bit of a numbing medication to numb the back of the throat, which can sometimes help as well. Once the um, detainee has chosen the nostril and we've chosen the size of the tube, we have two different sizes, um, and the detainee chooses that as well, then we would go ahead and place the enteral feeding tube. This goes through the nose and down into the stomach to provide the enteral nutrition. Uh, so uh, this part of the recording, what you just heard, was, uh, was obviously allowed out of the, uh, the prison without being uh, deleted because the doctor gave her uh, the permission to have me uh, take that out with me. Um, what you don't see in this recording is part of the, the tactic that they, uh, they use at the, uh, the prison. Everywhere you go, um, there was about 10 to 12 very, very uh, large men uh, behind me with a very uh, close uh, proximity to the, uh, the back of, the, of my head. Um, and they are re they are uh, um, and and they are uh, the filming uh, you um, and recording your uh, questions. Uh, so after that sound clip that you just heard, um, I asked another uh, the question, and she uh, gave an answer. And uh, the, uh, both the uh, the question and this um, this answer uh, were uh, deleted at um, operational security meetings. So I asked, uh, when you have the detainee restrained in the ch chair, and once the tube is inserted through his uh, nose and down his uh, throat, how do you, uh, how do you, uh, how do you uh, know if you have the tube in the right place? How do you uh, know it has reached his stomach? And the, uh, the doctor replied, quote, um, uh, well, the detainees are very uh, good at telling, uh, at telling me if I'm in the wrong spot. They are very good at that, end quote. Uh, to which I said, and what does that sound like? And as soon as I uttered these uh, words, a Marine immediately tapped me on the shoulder and simply said, you cannot ask that, sir. So in that, in that silence, I looked at the doctor's tubes she was holding in her hands, and I, uh, I wondered whether it's possible to put a, a lantern inside a yeah, body. And what does that, um, and what does that um, illuminate? And what did I intend with such a the question? Perhaps this was a, a way to inch around redaction, the, uh, the, uh, um, the, uh, the rubbing out of, the, of, 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 of um, bodies for a language of procedure displayed only in the voice of the state. I want to think more about the light um, and death, um, 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 two kinds of, two kinds of uh, light. One light that, 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 uh, uh, that uh, grazes uh, um, superficially, the other a light that in, invades, colonizes, and, occup and occupies. I can only Im imagine what force feeding sounds, sounds like. The inchoate uh, moaning, spitting up, coughing, the speech detritus of a uh, body in, uh, in pain. And yet I wasn't even allowed to ask the, uh, the question because, because if force feeding, as if Caroline Yipberg Vogel uh, writes, that quote is a is a yeah, lingual ev mm, event, not in the not in the uh, voice, but in the uh, clearing of the uh, throat. It has potential to tell us something through a language that remains. End quote. Uh, but what survives this excruciating invasion by nutritional su supplement? to keep the body alive by feeding it against its will. What kind of language um, 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 emerges? But of spitting out of the most intimate and irretrievable, what confessions are offered in these moments? What calls for um, rights and home are flung out only to evaporate? 
And so these taps on my shoulder, a, a, a quick touch, a re reminder that even the screams are redacted. But even if we pay attention, is it possible to uh, listen in spaces of trauma? What can be done against such a thorough and systemic redaction? Um, where can the poet witness if no uh, language survives, if uh, nothing uh, um, uh, uh, remains? And even in uh, witnessing, can trauma ever be bridged? Uh, can one body speak for m m another? The I idea that the tension or violence between uh, privileged bodies and those detained can be, uh, uh, can be bridged through po poetry is a complicated and problematic one. In fact, I, I, um, I uh, wonder if the poem itself is not also a form of confinement. I, th I think I also agree with poet and critic uh, Rachel Zolf when she says, quote, speaking the, for myself, I do not tr trust the, the, uh, the poet as a direct transparent witness. I do not tr trust the, uh, the uh, modest witness as an ethnographic field worker or I was here, so I am entitled to speak, end quote. In talking about my experiences at the prison, I want to avoid the kind of authoritative narrative testimony that has its roots in the colonialism or the very violence that created the conditions at Guantanamo. I turn to uh, Fred uh, Moulton when he, uh, when he uh, writes, uh, quote, uh, 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 redaction, black ops, black sites. Uh, what is it that now one has to forge a, 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 a paleonymic relation to black, to blackness? Uh, the word persisted now under e e e erasure or eclipse that ceded to the state of law exception. The word is begrudged, understood as being in need of a highlight. And I've been thinking about how to read this for a, for a, um, a, um, a while, this need of a highlight, this desire to shed light and thus eradicate um, um, on the dark brown bodies, color, skin, um, uh, countering the desire for the, uh, of the witness, Moten claims, quote, uh, the compulsion to tell us how you feel is the compulsion of, um, of, of, uh, um, of, uh, um, of uh, labor, not citizenship, exploitation, not domination, and it is whiteness, end quote. Mm, it's as if the uh, light we are talking about that now, such as the light shone into Gitmo, uh, threatens a kind of re-traumatizing or, uh, um, or, or, or a reification of the violence um, 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 visited upon the, the detained. Interrogation, um, um, almost all the sources of uh, torture at Gitmo requires a product, a result, a, a, a narrative. Perhaps my account could just be another dominant and dominating uh, narrative. I could be a uh, beam in Goya's lantern light um, that, that, that um, kills. And yet, I can't deny my compulsion to enter, to stand in a, a threshold, to see the to see the uh, lantern in 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 both directions, m m illuminating and m m and illuminated. Uh, the light that that reveals truth 
and the light that that reveals death and to get as close as I can as if seeing, hearing, or touching would allow for something beyond what text and reading you can do. Or maybe if I had the, the lantern I imagine now is attached to a body and then laying one's body down at the fault, slip, error, stutter, rupture, uh, the, the uh, body as seismograph, registering the, the, the uh, crisis, disrupting the smooth uh, trans transition of training, of discipline that otherwise conceals the wound here at Gitmo, under pressure of whatever stately orders that wounds remain invisible. I can perhaps uh, the buckle and slip and ask um, uh, what it sounds, 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 sounds like and cast, and cast light. Um, um, light as an emotion that does not produce clarity but is destabilizing. Emotion that uh, messes me up and makes me epistemologically incoherent. I don't know what to think. I think a lot of different. Um, I think a lot of different things. I feel a lot of different things, and I make the sense of it all that I can. And maybe I want to say that mine was an emotional in in encounter, even if I do not trust it, an encounter that, as Lynn Hyginian writes, quote is the uh, felt a, a awareness of something other that is essentially a, 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 a uh, memory, but one emitted, as it were, by another, is crucial uh, for our uh, consciousness of um, history." End quote. So this is a, a, the question I'm, ans I'm asking, um, um, uh, not a certitude. This is at least what I t tell myself at times, and yet I remain inextricably stained with the trauma of others and how I um, reek of the dubious implication, my artwork, my, uh, uh, my, my uh, trespass. At the end of each operational security of the meeting, they would go uh, uh, quite uh, late into the night, um, but after that we had um, time for uh, what they called uh, special requests. Um, so uh, on my second evening, I, I asked if I could go and re record inside the interrogation booth at Camp X-Ray at night. Uh, and I, I wanted to do so to get a different sound. Um, each, of the, each of the journalists had a um, had a specific uh, the, uh, the marine that uh, that followed them the whole time. Um, I think I was quite uh, fortunate with uh, mine. His uh, his uh, his uh, the name was uh, the Raoul, um, and uh, he uh, greeted me at the airport uh, quite excitedly um, because uh, he was he's, um, a great uh, lover of uh, Whitman and uh, and uh, Garcia uh, the Lorca. So he spent a lot of time talking about the poetry. And as a result, I think that he um, allowed me to go to places that um, um, I simply uh, was not allowed. So I visited Camp X-Ray um, at night, now the location of an active war crime investigation, now a space yeah, taken over by ecology. Ecology uh, that creeps in everywhere through all the cells and the barbed wire. And so in this, in this place, the, the uh, lantern shows no bodies. Only the landscape is um, stained. I um, entered, uh, with, um, I entered at um, 11 of the p.m. with my single uh, marine escort, the, uh, the uh, fence uh, lines, and the waist high of the grass. The, uh, the lantern uh, was my iPhone, uh, the flashlight, as I uh, moved uh, through the, uh, the grass, through each um, abandoned um, cell, and towards the interrogation booth that was cut in, in, into the hillside. Insurgents who want to keep everyone well connected with healthy bodies. 
see there's no lights here. Yeah. So that's what it's going to be. And from ABC News, Richard Cantu. What the looters and arsonists didn't know or care about. We didn't have to tell no story like that. This is our home. That is the shit. That woman now homeless and out of business. Can we go up there? Yeah, you can. Okay. <laughs> I'm just afraid to go up there myself. Okay. So in, in, in uh, that particular recording, what you hear is um, a rule, uh, um, uh, you hear us, uh, the pulling up to camp um, x-ray um, and um, he lets me out of the, uh, the van and um, he, he was a, he's a, a afraid of, uh, of us, of um, snakes. So he, uh, he uh, gave me the keys. Um, <laughs> so, I, I had the keys and I started the walking up uh, towards uh, the prison uh, and it was quite a the walk uh, to get up there and it's about I would say maybe in a in in a huge uh, field that's maybe about uh, the five acres and the prison takes up um, in a acre of that and it uh, moves up uh, the mountain which this is quite a quite a large mountain. Uh, beh um, uh, behind uh, the camp um, X-ray, um, and the interrogation, uh, the booths are up there. So m I opened the lock and made my uh, the way up to the interrogation uh, the booth. Um, so it was pitch uh, the black, and I was using the the light on my eye, the phone um, um, as a way to navigate uh, my way uh, through the grass and the cells. Uh, what I didn't know, and I should have, but what I didn't is there um, was um, a, a guard tower up on the mountain and another uh, one uh, to the uh, to the south. So uh, uh, within uh, 30 seconds, they saw my light, or uh, uh, what they would have perceived as is a single light um, navigating uh, Camp X-ray. Um, at that point, um, I was walking out of the interrogation of the booth, and I saw probably about six um, Humvees coming down the mountain towards uh, the Raoul, who was uh, down on the road at the entrance. So I walked down there, and there was uh, the, uh, the close to uh, close to ten uh, the Marines who were there, and at which point uh, a uh, a aggressive uh, the questioning um, happened. Uh, you know, uh, who who are you? Uh, why the fuck are you here? That kind of thing. Um, and it was um, so it continued for a long, uh, quite some time, or what felt like a long time. Them uh, 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 screaming at uh, Rule and I, and uh, Ruhl, uh, and us not being able to respond, and. Finally, uh, Raul, who was also uh, nervous because he occupies a, a, a very a low uh, rank uh, on the base, he finally spoke up and he says, all he was doing was uh, taking ambient recordings for his, for his, for his poetry. And at that point, um, all the Marines stopped and they, nobody said anything. And they uh, looked at me and this one, one guy was really just looking at me with such disdain. And, he's, and they just repeated that. They said, poetry. And I said, yes. And that, that soldier turned and got on his uh, two-way uh, radio to, to, to call his uh, 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 superiors. And um, I wrote it down. Uh, I, I wasn't allowed to record this, but I, I wrote it down. And he said, um, a quote on the radio, X-ray, sir, yes, 
unauthorized. Yes, sir, for poetry, sir. Yes, sir, yeah, poetry, I don't know. Yes, sir, yes, sir, poetry, yes, sir, <laughs> poetry, okay, sir, right? So after, after that, we were let, after that, we, after that they, they let me go. So, so, uh, so uh, maybe I, uh, I uh, want to ask, uh, can a poetry, as Peter uh, Gizzi um, 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 once wrote, um, um, uh, be a mystery in the face of violence? Is that what, is this what happened uh, th th that night? Um, at, um, at, at at Guantanamo at um at 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 get at Gitmo, my primary task was to collect sound, and sound is poetry's material material nature. This this was considered unimportant. The Marines of Southcom did not care nor understand why someone would want to collect ambient sound. It was of no threat to them. And for that reason, I was allowed into places and spaces where others were not. In this sense, I think along, Zolf's, uh, along Rachel Zolf's line that poetry isn't a witness. Rather, uh, this would be an example of Gitmo's sound witnessing to poetry. Um, during this confrontation at Camp X-Ray, I kept thinking about those poets on the inside who write on their bodies and on styrofoam cups. Of one detainee I read about in a redacted interrogation who, after writing poems for months, had them all confiscated by his interrogators. The next day, these interrogators brought him into another round of endless questioning by, by saying, um, 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 quote, we understand your allusions, end quote. Even the poems inside, inside the prison cannot escape inter interrogation. And yet what, what th threatens is a threatening about poetry is perhaps the echo, the, the allusion with an A that another human has been here. Echoes, as Lynn Haginian writes, quote, aren't inherently empty. The, the emotional encounter, even in the redacted poem, a poem reduced to a kind of nothingness, retains what Peter Gizzi calls, quote, an active presence within a silence. In other words, listening to the world anew shorn of the habitual, waiting to a crest into an evolving moment, end, end quote. Oh, while, I, um, I, while, I, while at Guantanamo, I was uh, permitted uh, to visit the detainee, uh, the, detainee um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the library the, li the, li the library houses the censored and highly curated books, um, uh, magazines, DV uh, and, DV and DV DVDs the detainees are able to access, although the detainees themselves are not allowed in the library. The library is housed in 10 to 12 steel shipping containers connected by a long hallway. And lining this hallway are paintings made by the detainees from 2002 until the, until the, until the present. Uh, so this space is, is, this space is called 
uh, the detainee art gallery. So uh, once you're in this hallway, uh, almost almost uh, looks like a, a grade school, uh, the portable, right? If you can imagine a very long hallway. Um, and at the entrance, um, um, at the entrance on the left-hand side, there's just a paper sign that says 2000 and, uh, 2002. And then um, each, and then as you go down the hallway, um, uh, that uh, it goes to 2003, 2004, 2005, all the way around. So I started at the beginning and I started to look at the, uh, the paintings and the paintings from 2002 were all, I would say, uh, I would describe as they are the paintings of, of, of uh, bazaars, mosques, uh, the deserts, um, uh, the camels, uh, souks, you know, uh, the markets, that kind of thing. And as you go down the hallway, the, uh, the paintings become uh, the, what I would describe as a uh, pastoral uh, North American, uh, maybe uh, New England uh, landscapes. So uh, horses and cows, um, sailboats, tea cups, um, uh, 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 cities, uh, cities, um, uh, 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 city um, scapes. Um, sort of, sort of uh, quaint homes um, and farms, um, and the Marines were really uh, the proud of of telling me they would point to 2002 and you, and then point to 2000 and um, 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 you know out of 15 and you say and they said yes yeah, see uh, see how much better uh, they are getting right. So um I, I, um 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 um. um Echoes aren't inherently empty. And then I saw this. Is this the lantern of? Is this the the lantern of of death carried by? interrogators, the torturers? Or is this the lantern that carries light and truth beyond, 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 um, beyond uh, um, uh, captivity? Is this the light shining on the rear of Goya's death squad? or the lantern light illuminating those about to be executed. The lantern is at death, why? No one knows. But maybe this lantern is a kind of unburdening, a carrying light from the ground-born lantern as both the agent of death and the objective way of disclosing these unspeakable acts for posterity. Or maybe the lantern is, as Hyginian writes, quote, beyond the evaluative or juridical and something more than aesthetic and more than nocturnal, obscure, and dreamy, and something beyond synthesis, but a swallowing everything up, end quote. And perhaps this is the light that Picasso described in Goya's painting when he said that the light of the uh, lantern illuminates everything. A quote, even the, the men shooting who should not be lighted from behind, end quote, who should not be lighted from behind. And maybe this, uh, this, uh, this, this lantern, not like the detainee's poetry, as Ariel Dorfman writes in the afterwords, in the afterword to poems from Guantanamo, is, quote, nothing more than the attempt to make breath permanent and secure, carve it into a rock or mark it on a paper or sign it on a screen so that it's, it's, um, it's 
Its cadence will endure beyond us, outlast our breath, uh, break the shackles of solitude, transcend our transitory body, and touch someone with its waters, end quote. And perhaps this lantern is rupture, a quick disfluency or an incendiary act, this somehow act that incredibly lives through the violence that opposes it, even if we do not yet know in what ways such lives will survive. But this is another frame, and I know it. This lantern as a specter that gnaws at my desire for an undoing, as Butler suggests, quote, a critical exuberant release from the force of illegitimate authority, end quote. And to touch someone with its waters, I've never seen a horizon so violent uh, the light here never builds to m anything. Now, now uh, let's pretend such a thing as possible and e imagine a detainee painting this lantern before someone looks at it. Perhaps I take it off the wall before a guard interrupts. Perhaps I hold it by its edge and face some repetition of defense after fence after fence, and think of the artist, poet, witness, swallowed up into a place where the, where, the, where the beauty and terror, art and atrocity are utterly inextricable. And this is something to bear, to, to carry the weight of Salahi's 51 lines of redacted poetry and the uh, lantern we hold bef before an impossible f f form. Uh, the light in Goya's painting, as uh, T.J. Uh, Clark notes, is, quote, not a general, not a general illumination, not the weirdness of Goya's more than a moon light, but a light planted on the ground, given a shape and a size, end quote. The enormous lantern, its unlovely geometry, quote, stands apart from the agony. It is a house, a cell, an abstraction of shelter, a tomb. End quote. This light is death. Its purpose is practical, lighting the victim so that the, they can be killed. Everything the spectator views in the uh, canvas is, is seen be, 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 be because of this light. The, uh, Clark is also cons concerned with what Picasso uh, learned from, from from uh, Goya, uh, from from uh, Goya's use of 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 a uh, light in the third of May, um, Clark says that says that uh, says that yeah, says that the death in Picasso's Guernica is not localized in the lamp in the lamp in the lamp bulb. Um, um, but quote um, um, uh, manifest materialized. As a kind of as a kind of illumination, end quote. Uh, Clark says he does not he does not mean illumination in the third of May and and Guernica to a, appear as a quote ambience a new a new a, a new moon light, but rather the uh, flash of a bomb blast the hardest, uh, most finite thing imaginable. It is as specific as the, as the, as the uh, twist of tungsten in a 60-watt bulb, end quote. M um, uh, bending the light to will. M light uh, can be 
can be bent at will. Uh, the ways of uh, reading the Im embodiment of power in this Gitmo, yeah, um, in this, in this, in this Gitmo uh, lantern is manifold. Uh, from its position on a wall, the lantern illuminates and implicates uh, the viewer, that is to say the witness, in a complex web of responsibility and culpability. In this same uh, position, uh, facing outwards, the light of this lantern has a similar uh, function to what Pamela M. M. Lee says of redaction, which she recalls, quote, uh, visible invisibility, an essentially aesthetic phenomenon that functions less to re 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 reveal than to uh, declare the uh, prerogatives of those who conceal, end quote. The, the, the uh, name on every painting in this, in, in this Gitmo gallery is redacted. <coughs> Detainees are not permitted into the, li uh, into the library where their paintings hang. Who then are these paintings for? In what ways do the uh, conditions in which this uh, painting was made um, uh, re reflect, anticipate, or interpret the uh, conditions of its display? How was, is that light bent uh, to the will of the uh, captors? This light from the uh, Gitmo lantern, its, specif its specificity, that brings death in the guise of illumination. If light in the Western tradition is a trope of, of, of truth or hope, um, this light is a hope that illuminates slaughter. This light in Clark's term is a, is a, is a bomb blast, a tomb. In this uh, direction, uh, light shone on your on your face, um, obliterates and 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 um, and um, and um, and, um, and um, anonymizes the the uh, captor and and executioner. Uh, you can be killed with the light of hope on your face. So uh, uh, when I had a chance to inter uh, view the uh, interview the uh, the the uh, warden at the prison, um, 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 I asked him about what he hears on a typical day. I asked what for him is the soundscape of the prison. He re Applied that on a typical uh, on a typical uh, day when he walks in the prison, he hears nothing. That it is mostly a uh, quiet and unre and unre 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 unremarkable. Uh, the warden made sure to tell me that if I was asking if he hears screams, then the answer is no. He then paused and said uh, that what he hears all the time is the sound of air of the sound of air, air conditioners. As soon as you step off the, um, as soon as you step off the, uh, as soon as you step off the uh, plane um, at the prison, you immediately hear air, air conditioners uh, because of the heat of the place. The, s the sound is all, the sound is all drone. And when I uh, think about these various uh, kinds of um, uh, these uh, various kinds of noise, air conditioners, drones, wind in the grass, birds, I am drawn to the uh, similarities between ambient vacancies and visual redactions. When I when I look at a redaction like uh, Salahis, I see some kind of visual equivalent of the air conditioner's drone. Um, all flat, um, empty spaces that mark sites of uh, 
of, of total domination. Ambient recordings are a kind of empty form. They, uh, they uh, resonate with the redacted poem. Um, uh, redactions look like ambient s sounds. How can we and how can we how can we uh, listen to redaction? How can we how can we listen to entire s systems of it? At Guantanamo, this AC drone uh, uh, covers the uh, the the uh, landscape with such uh, with such ubiquity that every bird call or wind uh, gust is actually an interrupted moment, uh, reaching a kind of un. Penny as a symbiosis in which horrifically one could not be aware of one without the uh, memory of the other. M m echoes aren't inherently m empty. M and reading Guantanamo di diary by Muhammad Salahi in the mess halls of, of the prison, I find, I find this passage. Um, 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 quote the interro interrogators turn the AC all the way down trying to reach uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit but obviously air conditioners are not designed to kill so in the well insulated room the AC fought its way to 49 degrees Fahrenheit which if you are interested in math like me, is 9.4 degrees Celsius. In other words, very, very cold, especially for someone who had to stay in it for more than 12 hours, had no under, underwear and just a thin, uh, and just a thin uh, uniform. Now, this is not ambient sound as R. Murray Schaefer describes it, quote, heavy, continuous, with slow fluctuations that are difficult to identify and, lo and, and locate, as this kind of noise tends to in, in, in encompass us, end quote. Rather, rather uh, this ambient drone is as specific as, um, um, as, as Clark's twist of tungsten in a 60 watt bulb, specific as the sound of what is done to bodies without hearing th those bodies. As Schaefer, as Schaefer, as Schaefer, um, as Schaefer um, uh, uh, describes, a drone is unlike, quote, some sounds, such as bells, gongs, pianos, per, 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 per percussion instruments that have no apparent body and consist exclusively of attack and decay. A, a drone such as that of the air, of the air, of the air conditioner uh, re uh, remains exclusively in the, in the um, intermediate or stationary state. They do not die, end quote. They do not die, but have the potential to reveal what uh, redaction does not allow, the um, intimate terror of hearing. As Jean-Luc uh, Nancy says, quote, there are no ear lids, end, end quote. The uh, drone does not die. Its, e its equivalent visual form might be the old opaqueness of redaction. But the recordings I was allowed to leave Gitmo uh, with are perhaps not that. Rather, they escape what power attempts to do to light. Um, blunt, it's relentless uh, seeping through the cracks. And I think I'm still working uh, through uh, what exactly happened that night at Camp X-Ray between the, uh, the permissible and the non-permissible 
and the nexus of a, and the nexus of a listening and ambience and, and field re recordings as perhaps a mystery in the face of v v violence. The, the uh, Marines on their two-way radios did not hear the poetry, the poetry as a threat, nor uh, did they understand what I was listening to. The uh, Marines of the U.S. Uh, the Southern uh, the Command had uh, no interest in these recordings, nor in trust in the notion of poetry as a tool for investigation and or witnessing. And so these ambient field recordings were allowed to slip through uh, thresholds of the most intense uh, security. Uh, the, 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 uh, NAID, the, uh, the military uh, uh, police and the Marines who were there that night as well as, uh, as their superiors at South um, did not did not care nor understand why someone would want to uh, uh, collect ambient sound. In this moment, they are assuming that there is no content in these recordings. Uh, background noise or ambient sound escapes redaction, perhaps to the extent they are perceived as already uh, redacted.
colors were playing, I would leave the McDonald's party. Sure, it's up to you. Yeah. time for a couple of questions, and then we can have another drink back here. And uh, maybe just a couple. Yes. About the uh, the uh, the, uh, the form of the recordings or the. Well, okay, yeah, I think that's a great, yeah, I think it's a great question. I think that uh, you know, uh, I think for me at least the 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 decision to, uh, uh, like I, I made a very conscious decision not to write poetry about this uh, particular experience for some of the reasons that I have been mentioned in the talk. But also I think that, um, I mean, I don't think that it's the uh, appropriate uh, 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 you know, form 
and I don't think I am in the appropriate uh, position to use that form uh, to write uh, about that particular experience, especially uh, given the 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 the, uh, the newness and the potential n now that you see a lot of detainees being released and then uh, writing about it. I think that that is an important uh, uh, space for them to occupy, right? And I, I think that, uh, so t time is also an issue, I think, that there, that you don't want to somehow interrupt that time with your own uh, artistic uh, the renderings of, of this, right? Um, so, to answer your question, I guess more uh, the bluntly, I, I, I haven't been thinking about the, f the uh, forum because I've just decided that that's not something that I will um, engage in, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great uh, the question. I think the, re, uh, the recordings uh, that Jason and I uh, worked on uh, together, um, and that they were, uh, and Jason, you can interrupt here if you like, but they were essentially se se uh, uh, sequenced, um, uh, 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 sequenced by the times of the, of the day. So we just kind of stuck with a very s simple uh, conceit, right? So from the from uh, the morning until you hear the uh, the colors um, at night, um, and uh, I think uh, uh, when we were doing the sound, we were only uh, layering the uh, the, uh, the transitions between those spaces. So there uh, there uh, there wasn't a lot of uh, manipulation in that sound, but it, then it also be that it be. It becomes a very difficult ethical uh, the question as well to how to uh, the, uh, the create that into a uh, the form right. Uh, some of the initial uh, the drafts we had were too uh, sonorous. They you know they 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 were they were too edited, sounded a little bit too much like uh, music. Um, but then we're also trying to find this middle space where it's not just kind of like a data dump in a sense, where we're just dumping individual re recordings that that, that uh, most of them are uh, the 30 seconds because I was I was interrupted a great deal, so uh, but we're still uh, uh, working with that. Um, so th that's how that decision uh, process uh, came or came along. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, Ryan, yeah. 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 And maybe my question is, what led to the decision to edit the audio in the first place? Uh, to that seems because that seems like that's a question of like uh, of it, poetic form. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's a good uh, the, uh, the question. I think that um, I think that uh, the, the editing of the audio um, um, came, you know. It was a it was a decision we uh, we were sort of the making just a very practical decision about essentially how to present it right, uh, and 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 that was the decision that we arrived at right. Um, I think that um, going f forward, there's 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 uh, there's other options uh, to do so right uh, uh, to use um, sort of the uh, different uh, the ways uh, to present that audio. Um, but, um, oh, you know, I think at the end of the day, um, so talking to, to uh, uh, Jonathan Skinner about this, right, because he does a lot of uh, the field re uh, the recordings, and he was listening to uh, the audio, and he was saying, like, because of these re uh, the re uh, recordings, um, they, could, uh, they can be anywhere, 
right? I mean, so, some of, some of uh, what you heard is inside a McDonald's at, at Guantanamo, right? So I think that the, that the, that the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the question that, 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 that I have not resolved and I'm still working through, and I think that you're asking is, I don't, I don't know how it's possible not to treat something aesthetically. Because then I think then, if you don't treat it aesthetically and you treat it conceptually, right? Like if you just do a, a kind of a, like a kind of a dump, like I have 600 individual audio files, and just be like, here it is, you can access it on your own, right? Then, then, I'm, then I'm also concerned about that kind of, uh, that kind of a gesture as well, right? I think that's my question. Yeah. Yeah. Like how is how is editing the audio any different than writing a form about it? Yeah, it's true. What's the what's the difference? I know there's a difference. Like I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think I I think that maybe that there is. Um, I mean, you know, if I'm if I'm being honest, there is a, a level of um, a, um, anonymity uh, to the sound that maybe doesn't exist so much with the. With the uh, with the with the uh, the poetry, like of course I am holding the recorder and I am going into these um, spaces, but the spaces that I'm a, a, a allowed to go are not decided uh, by me, and I th I th I, th I think that the um, in these kind of uh, initial gestures that we're uh, working on, I find that the uh, form of of, of sound and presenting uh, the audio to be uh, uh, perhaps a more uh, perhaps a more uh, the careful uh, the gesture, I'm not sure. Yeah. One yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, Julie. Yeah. Sure. Oh, sorry. Yeah, or whoever. Yeah. Ahead, yeah, Julie. Julie. Yeah. I, I don't know, and I know, and and I think that I think that um, you know I think that you and uh, you and uh, uh, you and uh, the Ryan are asking very similar questions, and I don't know. I mean, I could tell you that I'm that I'm getting away with not uh, writing a poem, but uh, I, you know, um, I suppose that's I suppose that's not what's happening, um, uh, <laughs> but. Yeah, but I mean, I think it's it's more for me. I was, um, yeah, I think I was really trying to be, um, um, I was tr trying to be as ethical as as I could. Okay, so um, and um, and I don't know if that was uh, uh, successful or not. And as I as I answered to uh, Ryan's uh, the, uh, the you know uh, the question, um, I, th I I I do think that 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 uh, uh, for now I feel more uh, uh, comfortable in, in in the form of 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 of, of sound right, um, and I I think it's also as I said maybe what's kind of uh, tripping me up is if you want a uh, to read poetry uh, the, from Guantanamo, you 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 would you can go and read poets for, who are there. So I'm not really sure what my what my uh, place uh, would be in that situation. Maybe in our expanded sense of poetry that a lot of us have now, that, that yeah, that by playing sound recordings and, and, and 
talking around something, that's, that's making a poem now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, can we take Shiraz's question and then we call that the last one? So we can have mill around for a bit and have a drink. My question is about, I assume all the speech against the motion, was there any sound of motion in prayer or the Arabic? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the call to uh, the, uh, the prayer, uh, they used to have it out, um, outside of the, uh, the prison, but in the last, I think, couple of the years, they moved it inside. Um, so, uh, and that was, um, I had re requested to re record that, but I wasn't allowed to do so. Um, and, the, um, and the books, uh, the, uh, the books are highly uh, curated, so you, there's no, uh, no sex, no uh, the violence. Um, the yeah, no, yeah. There's uh, you know, there's so so they're really highly uh, you know uh, the curated under those under those um, under those uh, structures. Right? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. So thanks.